Dr. Josh Clayton, um, State Epidemiologist and Secretary of Health Kim Malsum Risden. I'll go ahead and let um, Dr. Clayton give today's case update, and then we'll take your questions. Good morning. This morning we're reporting 49 new cases of COVID-19 in the state. This includes eight new hospitalizations, as well as five new deaths, uh, all of those five deaths occurring among Minnehaha, Minnehaha County residents. Uh, 122 new recovered individuals from COVID-19, as well as 570 new negative tests that have been performed. In total, we have 3,663 COVID-19 cases in the state. Of those, 1,315 are considered active infections, and 2,309 are among individuals who have recovered. Our totals uh, regarding hospitalization are 271 that have been hospitalized and 39 that have died. Uh, we have 21,534 negative tests that have been performed to, to date. Our community impact map, there are no new updates for today. The case, new cases by county include one in Beadle, five in Brown, one in Clark, one in Clay, one in Corson, one in Davison, one in McCook, 25 in Minnehaha, one in Moody, five in Pennington, three in Todd, three in Union, and one in Yankton. For the new cases by age range, we have three in the zero to 19 year age category, six in the 20 to 29 year age category, 18 in the 30 to 39 year age category, six in the 40 to 49 year age category, seven in the 50 to 59 year age category, six in the 60 to 69 year age category, one in the 70 to 79 year age category, two in and the 80 and over category. For new cases by sex, we have 23 that are male and 26 that are female. For the deaths by county, we have two in Beadle, one in Gerald, one in McCook, 34 in Minnehaha, and one in Pennington. For the deaths by age range, we have one in the 30 to 39 year age category, one in the 40 to 49 year age category, five in the 50 to 59 year age category, six in the 60 to 69 year age category, five in the 70 to 79 year age category, and 21 in the 80 and older population. For deaths by sex, we have 21 that are male and 18 that are female. Thank you, Dr. Clayton. Um, if you would unmute, unmute your lines, we'll uh, take your questions, and uh, we're ready for our first question. Hi, this is Ray from Calland. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, yes, um, our mayor in Sioux Falls said um, they're looking at positive tests as a percentage of all tests taken as um, watching that as a sign for progress. Um, can you comment on that? Is that something why, why the city would look at that and would the state look at that at some point further down the road? Uh, Ray, this is Kim Olson Rice, and that is one of the things that uh, data points that we do keep track of. Um, we also keep track of our overall rate of testing uh, per million and um, as of yesterday we ranked about 20th across all states for that. Um, other things that we uh, keep track of are our deaths per positive test, um, which we have been in the very uh, lowest states for that, so that's good news. Um, and then certainly our death rate um, as well. But as a question, a, can oh, go I, ahead, can Ray. I follow up? Yeah, yep. um, he's looking at positive tests, the percentage of positive tests of all tests, as, as saying, you know, once that starts going down, that's progress. Um, that's a specific percentage. Is that something the the state sees as progress? If you see the you know percentage of positives go down as compared to all tests. Um, well, the the progress that that would be referring to would be just more testing actually happening, and so it's just a reflection of overall testing activity. 
So it's not a sign that things necessarily would be decreasing. Like COVID um, it's not would a be sign waning. that the cases are necessarily decreasing. It's really a function of how many tests are being done. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for the follow-up. You're welcome. You're welcome. Next question. This is Lisa with the Argus Leader. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, just wondering on the death of the person in the 30 to 39 range, can you say whether that person had underlying conditions? Um, so that investigation is uh, still being uh, evaluated, or that person is still under evaluation in terms of um, uh, all of their underlying medical history. Um, so what I can say is that that um, uh, person was identified as COVID-19 on the death certificate, and we're verifying um, the information that we've received thus far. Okay. Next question. Adam St. Paul, Dakota Broadcasting. Go ahead, Adam. We've been uh, hearing some reports of uh, potential uh, COVID-19 um, uh, possible exposures at businesses around Aberdeen. Um, and obviously it's probably speculation at this point uh, and haven't heard. I was wondering if you can confirm any uh, potential, uh, you know, spots in Aberdeen, any potential exposures. And I guess wondering when you do, when do you decide to release that information? Because you have released it for some businesses in the Sioux Falls areas, for instance. So, Adam, this is Kim Olson Wright, and the, um, pro the process um, is uh, associated with our uh, contact tracing. And so when we have a positive case, we interview the person um, who's positive to understand who they would have been in close contact with. Um, in some situations, the person has been at work while um, potentially able to transmit or uh, infect other people. Um, in situations when um, that work site um, or other site um, is such that we can't identify specific individuals, then we would issue a public notice so that people that may have come into contact with that person would have that awareness and can monitor for their symptoms. So if that's the case with a business in Aberdeen, then we would issue a, a public notice in that, in that situation. Next question. Hi, Megan, we're at New Center One. Go ahead. Uh, two questions. One, have you identified any hotspots in Pennington County? And then also, how many positives have been connected to, have you identified have been connected to the Walmart employee who tested positive in Rapid City? Um, so this is uh, Dr. Clayton. We. Uh, have not identified a, any specific hotspots uh, within Pennington County, uh, and uh, the uh, individual um, uh, case that was identified uh, in a Walmart employee, uh, there's no known cases that have uh, resulted from that uh, individual's positive test. Thank you. Next question. Any other questions? Uh, Megan, again, if you are in news radio. Go, I heard news radio, just the end yep, of it. Go, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, could you give us an update on the Smithfield numbers once again of the employees uh, who have recovered and also the close contacts? Um, so we have 825 uh, Smithfield employees that have recovered and 239 of their close contacts that have rec uh, that became cases that have fully recovered. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. Yeah, Megan Moran again with New Center One. Go ahead. Um, so when travel between Rapid City and say the Pine Ridge Reservation is so prevalent, um, back and forth, is there any way to denote someone who tests positive or where they test positive when it differs, differs from their county of residence? <clears throat> so this is Dr. Clayton. That is information that we receive as part of the uh, report of a uh, person's positive test. Uh, so we receive that from the laboratory and uh, as well as getting additional supporting information from the clinician. Uh, so that is part of the process that, that we undergo and why some of our numbers uh, in those provisional uh, data tables do change from time to time is that an individual may be tested, uh, and this is this is true regardless of the area of the state, that they may be tested uh, outside of the county in which they reside. 
uh, and sometimes when we don't have the uh, specific identifying information for their county of residence, uh, that gets uh, associated with uh, the facility that uh, collected the specimen, and then we later uh, do follow up and identify the, um, where the actual residence uh, of that person is located. So. Regardless of who is submitting that result, uh, we are following up and we are putting those cases uh, into the appropriate uh, uh, counties of where they reside. Next question. This is Lisa with the Argus Leader. Go ahead, Lisa. Um, I noticed there are five more cases in uh, Brown County. I'm just wondering how many cases now are connected to Dunkota. Um, so as of this morning, uh, we are reporting 77 uh, cases that are associated with the Demcota beef. Okay. Next question. This is Joseph from the Capital Journal. Go ahead, Joseph. Thanks, y'all. Good morning. Um, is there anything that you'd like the public to know that we aren't smart enough to have asked with everything coming out? You know, it, it's ebbing and peaking with the information and stuff and is there anything that you feel that that we're missing that you would like to potentially be read well joseph this is kim i i think the media has done a good job of helping us uh, make sure people uh, continue to do things like social distancing um, staying in smaller group sizes washing their hands um, disinfecting their environmental, uh, you know, environment, um, and just doing all those things that can really help reduce the spread of COVID. So we'd sure appreciate another call out of those things. It's going to continue to be important for us, um, really probably into the coming months. Um, and so this is, you know, a marathon. It's not a sprint, and we've got to just hold tight and keep doing um, the things that we need to do to slow the, slow the spread of COVID down. Call for a final question. Yeah, JP from KOR News Radio again. Uh, could you give us an update on uh, how things are going with the CARE 19 app? So, um, this is Dr. Clayton. Uh, we've had uh, uh, the uh, CARE 19 app uh, being used, uh, but we uh, have only had, you know, uh, one individual who has um, uh, had that downloaded to their uh, to their phone um, that was that ended up you know being a case and uh, I think it's a good reminder that uh, individuals do need to uh, enable that app to access their location services um, we have not had other individuals who have been cases that we've uh, followed up at this point um, so just a, a reminder that uh, individuals, if they're downloading that app, they do have to provide it access to location services. Otherwise, the phone will not uh, capture any information of, of where they've uh, where they've been at. So. And that was the situation with the one case that right. we had. Yeah. Correct. Um, Thank you. Uh, one. Yep. Uh, one last thing I did want to mention um, is I just got uh, information submitted to me um, on the uh, death in that 30 to 39 year old. Uh, we we do have uh, information that that person had an underlying medical um, condition uh, that contributed to uh, their uh, uh, to their death. So I did want to make sure that I provided that uh, as follow up to the, one of the earlier questions. So thank you. All right, thank you all for uh, joining us this morning, and we'll visit with you again tomorrow.